Hello everyone, welcome to Frame Academy Project 4, Part 2. So in Part 1, we explored the starter project, uh, which was a project I had you make a copy of. Um, and then I hope you did the challenge for Part 1, which was to kind of tweak the starter project to start to make it your own. And you could have done that a few ways. You could start adding your own assets, you could start removing some of my assets or just modifying them. Uh, in any case, I hope you uh, made a few changes. And here in part two, we're going to talk about how to make your WebXR site responsive to clicks. And, you know, on a cross-platform uh, project like this one that works on desktop and mobile uh, and VR headsets, uh, click isn't as simple as it sounds, right? Um, you have to, your website needs to be kind of listening for the mouse, you know, the typical click on desktop or laptop. Um, a touch on a mobile phone, uh, or a, you know, click on a, a trigger, uh, like this one, or like the trigger, I don't have it around right now, for the Oculus Go. Oh, here it is. So a lot of different clicks to listen to, but we need to set this up because in the next part of this project, we're going to be kind of actually creating interactivity so that, you know, you can make it so that when the user clicks on something, something else happens. But the ground layer there is figuring out first, okay, how do we even get our WebXR site to listen for uh, this click event uh, on every sort of input device? Okay, so I'll try to keep this short and sweet, and uh, that way we will be off to the races on uh, interactivity with JavaScript. So if you go to the starter project on line 25, I do believe, yep, 25, you'll see I've got, I've set up a camera. Now, as you saw in, you know, projects one, two, and three, A-Frame will create a camera for you by default, but as soon as you want to customize it a little bit or do different things to it, you'll want to create your own. So to do that, you can make an entity uh, as you have in your starter project with the camera component on it, right? And I've also thrown in uh, the look controls component, which is what makes it so you can click and drag to rotate the camera around and also the WASD controls component so that you can use uh, the WASD keyboard keys to move the camera around uh, your site. But um, I've put another entity, uh, I've nested it inside of this camera entity, right? So this is the child entity of this parent, right? If you remember that terminology from uh, the previous project, and inside of this child entity, I put a new component called cursor. Uh, this is another component that comes with A-Frame, right? so we didn't need to import it as a script up here. Uh, it's called a core, core component if it comes with A-Frame. So I've set up the cursor component, and this cursor component is actually what provides uh, that ability for the user to kind of click uh, in the scene. So we need that cursor. And I checked in the documentation for cursor, right, which you can do just uh, aframe.io slash docs, gone to cursor. And I noticed that one of the properties we can configure is called ray origin. And this is where you can set where the, where the click comes from. And you can set it to be either the mouse or the entity itself. Now, in our case, I just want to listen to the mouse, right? So I'm actually going to set this ray origin property to mouse. That's why when you're actually checking out uh, your starter project, like if you click show live, when you click on that sphere uh, in the back left, just with the mouse, uh, it will trigger that action, right? It's, it's listening for the mouse. Now, the other option, even though we're not using it, I just want to show you kind of what it is. So if you set the ray origin to be um, an entity, you can make like a visual cursor, right? And what I mean by that is if you look on this example site, you see how there's this black circle in the middle? I've actually made this. Uh, I've put the cursor component on this little ring and I've set the ray origin to be the entity itself. So in this, uh, in this project, I can actually click using this visual cursor. So, in fact, I can't click on something just with the mouse, right? That doesn't work. It's not, the cursor isn't set up that way. But with my uh, kind of visual 
entity cursor I can, right? Now, they both have their pros and cons, right? The, this kind of entity cursor is actually really good for uh, devices like Google Cardboard, where you don't have a mouse or a VR controller to work with. You just have kind of your, you know, your perspective and maybe a button. Um, but I opted for mouse uh, instead because most users I find, they just expect to be able to point and click with the mouse and I wanted to make it work best for them, uh, for those on desktop or laptop. Now, if you're on mobile, um, what this means, if the Ray Origin is the mouse, it means that it'll just respond to wherever you point and tap, right? So if you actually view your project on mobile, you'll notice that you can you know, look around and actually just tap on the photosphere and it will expand out and you can look down and tap on this button here and you'll go back to the kind of home gallery here. Okay, nice. So that actually covers us on desktop, you know, desktop, laptop, and mobile. But now let's get to the exciting stuff, of course, which is uh, VR controllers, right? So this is one of those times where A-Frame, the development framework we're using, really shines. Uh, because just with one line of code, we can make this work, right? It's, we don't need to do a ton of stuff to actually do this kind of impressive thing which is make your WebXR site responsive to any uh, VR controller, whether it's from a Windows Mixed Reality headset like mine, um, or an Oculus Go, uh, or a Vive, or a Rift, or the upcoming Oculus Quest, you know, you, you name it. Um, so it's really powerful. And, and that line of code is already in the starter project. If you look on line 29, you'll see an entity uh, with the component laser controls. This is your motorcycle out there. Uh, this is one of those core components that comes with A-Frame. And the property that we want to configure is just called hand. Right? And you can set it to be either right or left. And laser controls causes like a laser beam to shoot out of your VR controller. And you can use that laser beam to point and click to interact with things in your scene. Or do things like hover uh, and things like that. So um, it gives you a way to interact, interact with things at a distance, right? You don't need to be right up close to something to interact with it. You could point at something on the wall that's far away and click and it'll work. And that's, that's it. I mean, uh, this, if you load up your project on an Oculus Go in the Oculus browser uh, or in Firefox, for example. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and just open up Firefox and we'll see this works. Sometimes my, you know, my headset is a little funky, but let's see what happens here. Okay, so I've loaded up the site. Firefox, of course, is best for web VR. And here we are, right? So I'm in my headset, and here's my controller, right? I set it to hand right. So here's my right uh, controller, and you'll see it's got a little laser kind of sticking out of it. And I can point that at something that has some interactivity set up on it, and you can click with the trigger. Okay. So I'm just going to click on that photosphere, and there it is. Voila. Right, super powerful. And then um, when I want to go back, I can just click on this. So there you have it, right? And this works on the go uh, as well and all sorts of other VR headsets, which is really cool. Take that off and close out of this. Take us back here. Okay, so for the challenge, all I want you to do for this, just keep it nice and simple. I just want you to try to open up your project on as many devices as you can, right? Desktop, mobile, uh, VR, and just test out that interactivity. Now, the only thing in the project that has interactivity setup on it is that photosphere in the back left corner. So try out clicking on that, right? And then you can look down to click on the button to take you back to the main gallery. Um, if you'd like to have a little fun with that laser pointer, I showed you in the text for the challenge, there's a way you can uh, adjust the color of the, uh, the laser using the line component on the entity that has laser controls on it. So go ahead and go for it. Make sure everything's working okay. If something is not working as you'd expect, let me know in our online community. You can access it just with that little 
the navigation button in the top left and I will be happy to help you out. Okay, looking forward to seeing you in part three and uh, see you soon. Good luck.